Political contributors Terry Sullivan and Joel Payne join us from Washington, D.C. Terry was the campaign manager for Senator Marco Rubio's presidential campaign. And Joel is the former director of African-American advertising for Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Good morning to you both. I think none of us will miss the long-winded speeches, but those sort of electric moments that you usually get with a crowd at conventions will be absent. Joel, let me start with you. What do the Democrats need to accomplish in this virtual convention. Well, Anthony, you, you also have to remember, too, these are organizing moments and opportunities. When you're in a state like Wisconsin that's so critical to Democrats winning, not just having the pomp and circumstance of the convention, but actually having the opportunity to be on the ground, to get activists excited and revved up for the election coming up. The Republicans will have the same challenge next week with their convention. I think what's also going to look different here is the keynote. Normally, the keynote is the big elevated opportunity moment for a young rising leader like a Barack Obama in 2004. Or like a Sarah Palin for the Republicans in 2008. It's going to be different this year. There are going to be a collection of Democratic voices on Wednesday. So there'll be some things that look similar, but a lot of things that'll look very different. Terry, you've run a presidential campaign. How would you feel about having a virtual convention for your candidate? You know, in, in many ways, there are a lot of obvious challenges, but, but one of the, the biggest advantages is that as a campaign manager in a big event like this, you're trying to limit risk. You're trying to mitigate any of the unforeseeable things that can happen, protesters or, you know, someone falling off stage or, or any of these things. And this r removes a lot of that. Look, I've been in a situation where we've literally had staff bribe a train conductor just to not blow his whistle when he went past a live venue. So there's a lot going in that a live venue and something big like this really does make an extra challenge. And, and th this moves a lot of that, especially when you've got a candidate like Joe Biden who tends to be gaff prone and is rusty because he hasn't been out there campaigning in the last four months. So in many ways, this is an advantage for his campaign. Yeah, someday you'll have to tell me how that conversation with the train conductor went. Uh, I want to ask you, <laughs> a former Ohio uh, Republican Governor John Kasich is going to speak at the Democratic convention in support of Joe Biden. There's also supposedly another prominent Republican who's going to come out for that. What's the for Biden, what's the significance of that, do you think, Terry? Uh, not much. I mean, look, John Kasich is always about John Kasich and always has been. It's rather rich since no other Republican did more to help uh, Donald Trump get the nomination than John Kasich did to serve as a spoiler by staying in the race as long as he did. Uh, you know, he's just doing it to get try to extend his, his time in the limelight. Um, but it, it's no significance whatsoever for, uh, for Joe Biden. Joel, our, our CBS News Battleground Tracker poll uh, found an overwhelming majority of Democrats are glad that, that uh, Biden picked Kamala Harris. What do you think that choice uh, represents for the future of the party? Well, I've been saying that this uh, choice is as much about 2024 and 2028 as it is about 2020. It shows where the party is going. And it also shows that there is a new generation of Democratic leaders that Joe Biden is really serving as kind of the, the ushering in point for. He wants, to, he wants to demonstrate that it's not just going to be kind of politics as usual for Democrats, that there are going to be new voices in the party that he's going to help elevate. What's interesting about Kamala Harris is she can be sold to all parts of the Democratic coalition progressives, women, college-educated women in the suburbs, African-Americans, immigrants. And we're going to see a lot of that on display this week. Terry, the, the president is digging in on his stance on mail-in voting. Do you think that's an effective strategy? You know, I don't. But, uh, you know, uh, when has when the president listened to anyone uh, on political advice? Uh, at, at the end of the day, Republicans do very well with uh, absentee voting. Uh, seniors tend to vote Republican, uh, especially in a state like Florida, where Republicans overperform consistently in presidential elections when it comes to mail-in voting or absentee voting. Uh, so it is very, very counterproductive to, to try to suppress uh, absentee voting. It really is infuriating. Terry Sullivan, Joel Payne, thank you both very much.